Hi everybody, thanks for joining me on this video. We'll be covering some techniques that will add power to your playing, like polyphonic ideas, chromatic ideas, arpeggiated ideas. We'll use some examples from some of my tunes, and we'll talk a little bit about phrasing and tones and even a little segment about harmonics. So, tune in. Okay, the first thing we're going to work on is tune-up. Pretty easy thing. So we'll start with the A string. Why the A? Well, to me, it's the most stable string. It gets bent the least, and it uh, tends to hold its tuning. Make sure you got that one, then we'll go through all six. Okay. E. Hope you know what that one is. That's a G. Check the A again, because if you've got a floating bridge, you're going to need to do this a bunch of times. And then the... Oh, just kidding. That's the E. Again, if you're out of tune very much, you better go through it again. All right. First thing I do before I practice, play, or anything, especially if I have the option, is to do a little warm-up. And the easiest thing about a warm-up is the name kind of explains it, warm-up. So just like runners do, you want to stretch and work up to it slowly. And uh, the easiest thing to do is if you're in a climate where you have winters, uh, you need to get your hands at least to body temperature, which is, you know, depending on your state of tune, somewhere in the 90s. And uh, if you're just coming out of the cold, just run your hands under some warm water or uh, hot air or something, get, get your hand at least warm enough to where it's not all stiff. Then start a little easy warm-up. There's a million different warm-up exercises and uh, well, I'll just try something a little unusual here. This will be a scale that you don't use too much in music, which makes it a good warm-up exercise because it's, it's real symmetrical and it's three notes to a string. I'm using alternate picking during my warm-up and we're just going to take it nice and easy just kind of relax and, and find a tempo. I'll do it slowly to show you uh, the pattern I'm talking about. And then, actually, the next note is one whole step away. We're doing whole steps, that is, every two frets. When you get to the B string, of course, you're going to have to move up two frets. And come on back down. It's not a very relaxing scale, but it's, it's nice for the warm-up because it gets you your left hand moving positions and you're stretching your uh, first or and or fourth finger out. So you're, you're covering some ground with your left hand and it's a good picking exercise, any speed you want to do it. And then try it up on the next fret, but anytime you do your warm-up, uh, don't, don't do anything to the point of pain where it's hurting in your arm or anything like that. Just, like I said, take it easy and, and work up to it slow because, uh, well, warm up. That's all it is. Triplets are a happy feel. But when you do, when you're playing fast, it helps me to keep time if I accent every uh, certain group of notes. Since it's triplets, I'll accent every third or every sixth note. Here, at this speed, every sixth. Right with my foot. And then that way you can, it, it's easier to keep in time than if you're sitting there just blurring notes. And one of the things about playing guitar or playing music in general is that when you're playing by yourself, so, somebody should be able to just solo you playing and be able to feel the time and hopefully hear the music at the same time too. So remember that, I mean, every, everything you play should, even in your warm-up, should have rhythm and, and some kind of uh, uh, accent always helps the rhythm. Okay, that's a whole tone pattern. You do, it, do it up and down the neck, moving up one fret each time. Another thing you can do is uh, a pattern that'll work over diminished chords. Uh, again, a diminished chord is not something you really sit on for a very long time in rock and roll, so we'll just use this as a warm-up exercise. Same pattern, really. Same, start on the same places as you would the, tri the whole tone thing, but uh, just do a whole step, half step. 
but that'll work over a diminished chord. Mm -hmm. Say you've been uh, doing your scales and so forth, or this warm-up exercise, and what happens to me, maybe it's because I'm left-handed, but my right hand starts to get a little tight, and any time that happens, it's just your body's way of telling you, hey, you need to, uh, you know, stretch it out, get the blood flowing again, and uh, it's no disgrace to so stop and rest for a second. So what, what I'll do, especially if time is tight, is do a little left-hand exercise while my right hand's recuperating. Here we're going to put our fingers one fret apart on the same string, in this case the B string, then pull one finger out to the adjacent string, in this case the G string, and do a little hammer on to try to keep it in time. Now put that finger back, take it up with the second finger. Why are you doing this, Steve? Well, the reason these fingers are anchored is so that you won't be flopping them around and doing something like this. It keeps, it forces you to use your finger and nothing else. Now if you're into two-handed stuff, you may be saying, that's great, but I'm into two-handed stuff. Well, try it. Do it with your other hand. If you can't pick very fast with your hand, if you're slower with your right hand, do it uh, at a slower tempo. Okay, next we're going to do some scales. Oh no, scales. I thought this was a tape with licks and stuff that I could use. Yes, it is. And we're getting to that as soon as possible. The way that we're going to do the scales is going to help you do the licks. I promise you, learn the scales this way is going to be the basis for almost all the fast licks you hear in tonal music. This is actually 21 fingerings of scales. But I'm going to show it a way to think of it that's really easy. And it's actually just seven there's seven tones in the scale. We're going to do seven different fingerings. And along the way, if you want to, you can learn the modes real quickly. We're going to start in A with a A major scale, two octaves. We're going to learn each scale in starting on our first finger and our second or third, depending on the situation, and our fourth finger. So each scale is going to have three different fingerings of the exact same notes. Okay, first of all, A major. Starting with the first finger. In this case, I'm doing most of the stretching between the third and fourth finger, trying to keep my first finger. Well, anytime you practice scales or anything that you practice that involves, uh, you know, picking or a lot of notes, play it fast when you're ready to play it fast. Okay, we're going to move up with our first finger to the second note of the A major scale. So it's the same scale, but the finger is different, of course. We're going one note higher, too. Same exact set of notes, but starting with our first finger on the third note. If you're looking for the fast forward button because you say I've already learned scales, just hold on a second. I'm going to show you some, some ways of using the scales. Fourth note of the scale. I'm finding ways to finger it to where I don't have to move my hand. All I'm doing at the most is stretching one finger, uh, one fret, and then in most cases it's the fourth finger. Okay, fifth note, we're just moving up the scale. Six. seventh and you might
might want to go up. up to the top, come back down. Now, this is all with just starting with the first finger. Now, let's throw a little monkey wrench in for everybody who's got it down so pat. Let's try it the exact same thing, only starting on the second finger or third finger. Same exact notes as doing it with your first finger. Same exact note. But we're using it different finger so we're getting a whole different shape happening and for our next note it seems more logical to me to use the third finger than the second finger so with this pattern we're going to use our second or third depending on and it's the fourth note again this one use your second finger because it uh, fits the pattern better then fifth note, this one, use your third finger. Sixth note, use your third finger again. Seventh note, third finger one more time. So we're back to A again. Now, one more time. Only we're going to start every scale, or every point of the scale, with our fourth finger. A little stretch. So we're going to continue on up the scale, starting every scale point with our fourth finger. So what you end up with, this way, this way, this way. Three different ways of playing every pattern. Continue that up and down the neck until you know it. Okay, once you've got the, the idea of playing the scale straight, you know, this note to this note and coming back. Let's try doing some variations. Try walking up the scale just on two strings. Patterns, that's all it is. Sequences based on the major scale. To illustrate this point about the scales and how you can use them, and well, how much I use them, and most people I've seen use them, we're going to just play over three chords that are diatonic or in the same scale as that A major scale. We be F sharp minor and D and A. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Okay, the first of these big three topics I mentioned before is going to be arpeggio ideas, arpeggio licks, uh, working from the notes of a chord is really all it is. You t if you consider a triad or a basic chord as having three notes, in rock and roll sometimes it only has two, but for the purposes of our discussion we're going to consider it has three notes, the tonic or the root, the third and the fifth. So when I say, uh, it's a, you know, in the A major, we're going to talk about A, C sharp, and E as being the first, third, and fifth, something like that. And the whole idea of arpeggiated lick ideas is to allow you to outline the chord and, uh, you know, basically play a, suggest the chord by playing one note at a time. Obviously, the easiest way to do that is to play the chord one note at a time. And that works great, but it, you, get, you cover a lot of ground quickly, and all of a sudden you're up at the top of the neck before you know it. So we're going to try to do some patterns that, uh, well, that uh, repeat a little bit more and, and involve some other notes besides the chord notes that are based off the chord notes. First one will be an A minor pattern. A minor seventh, actually, will do uh, first, third, fifth, and one more, the seventh. Okay, we'll do the whole lick slowly. Move up a fifth, do the same thing. Move up to the another A. Up to another E. Fingering's different here. Come back down. You have to check the fingering on the chart for this one. Again, the only tricky thing is once you get onto the B string, sometimes you have to clump your fingers together to, to put one finger on each string. Okay, this next lick is one that illustrates a style that I find myself using a lot when I really want to push the time, kind of nail the time, and you know, create a lot of rhythmic excitement. And uh, you know, you want to sometimes you want to keep a repetitive kind of idea going that covers different chords. So you only need to change the notes that are different from one chord to another. So here we're talking about F sharp minor to D, and with an arpeggio, the only note we need to change is a C sharp to a D. So there's uh, there's a lot of common tones. By itself, it sounds just kind of like a weird collection of notes, but up it's before. The reason we're doing the, the uh, pattern this way is so that the, the high notes punch the most through most amplifiers and most mixes. Now we'll go to D and start with F sharp again. Right, it's weird slow, I know. Some licks like this you just don't think of while you're playing it slow. The, the ideas can only come when you're playing fast because then you see where it, it kicks the time. So 
Well, it's, it's a little weird slow, but once you bring it up to speed, I think you'll find it works real good. One, two, three, four. <laughs> The title like Power Lines, and uh, my latest album being called High Tension Wires. I had to do something from the album, show an example, and there's a tune called Too Many Notes that fits the idea of arpeggiated licks perfectly, and this would be a good one to learn, or at least go through. It's got, the melody is arpeggios, and it, the melody is almost constantly the 60 note triplets. got a few weird patterns in it that uh, throw the time around but it's constant 16 triplets so the, the the rhythm never changes the accents do one two one two three four Too many notes. Kind of uh, slow temp. Remember, there's a pickup note, so you don't accent the downbeat until you get to it. Big jump. This next section has to do with chromatic possibilities. I was looking for the exact definition of chromatic because I think everybody knows it involves half steps of the musical scale. But to me, it kind of means more of the root word chroma. I don't know if it's really the root word, but this is, again, my opinion and my little way of thinking of it. Chroma having to do with color. And I think of the chromatic tones as being tones that add color to a scale. What we'll do to illustrate this is take a real simple scale. I think everybody knows this, just the minor pentatonic. And just introduce a couple chromatic tones just to show you how different it can make it. 
So what we'll do is um, we'll jam on a kind of a blues feel for a minute and show you uh, just some simple ways and just in one position to insert some chromatic notes to add a little color to the blues. <laughs> There's a lot of other ways to play a pentatonic scale, and I'll show you one of them right now. What's so weird about that, Steve? Well, I'll show you. What we're doing is every opportunity on the guitar that we have to repeat a note, the same note on a different string, we're taking. And it involves a little bit of stretching, but it, it provides a really neat effect. Clean tone for this demonstration. So we're going the tonic, third, fourth, then doubling that because, well, just because we can. Playing the same note twice again on the uh, D string. The effect is that you get a lot more notes without quite as much movement. And when you play the same note on well, twice, one in one string and one in the adjacent string, it gets a slightly different sound and, and it adds, it kind of confuses the ear and makes you think something weird is happening. Well, in fact, something weird is happening. It's a, it's a weird scale. <laughs> Slowly. Slowly, we're going to do it. There's some stretches involved, so check with your physician first. Here's just a different fingering coming down, starting on E. I'm adding an extra note just so it'll end, you know, in a you know, pretty normal amount of time. So it feels like a definite phrase to me. Because once you speed it up, you've got to make music out of it. 
And when, when you, whenever you practice scales or variations on scales, it's nice to make it into a phrase and feel it as a phrase so that it's easier to transfer it into music. All these ideas, I mean, learn them as licks and learn how to play them because I promise you they'll help your technique and give you some new ideas. But with, with your new ideas, try to find ways to put them into phrases and into music. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about polyphonic ideas, polyphonic lines. Basically, to me, poly means many and phonic means sound. So, uh, in this case, we're going to go for two sounds at one time. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be always two sounds at one time, but just the suggestion of them. Like, imagine a uh, juggler. You've seen the juggler sometimes juggle two balls with one hand. Well, obviously, they, they never have two balls in their hand at the same time, but there's always one up in the air. And that's kind of one way to achieve a polyphonic effect with the guitar, especially when you're using a pick, when you can only hit one note at a time. Is you do a little bit on this line, then jump back down to this line, and go back, keep changing back and forth, and keep both lines happening. But, like I said, technically, you're only hitting one note at a time, but you're getting the effect of two things happening. To illustrate this, I'm going to start with a simple little tune that's pretty melodic. Now, I know we're talking about power lines and everything, but this is just to illustrate the point and give you uh, an appreciation for the different fingerings you have to do sometimes to achieve the effect of one note ringing over another. Okay, I'll play this for you slow. Keep repeating that. That's uh, from a Dregs album, by the way. A pretty long time ago we recorded that. But it, the idea is that you always are playing just one note at a time, but you keep the note ringing. Speed it up now, the effect of the two voices is a little bit more obvious. What you got is the top note is acting like the melody, and all the bottom notes, even though you're hitting them at odd times, they're giving you uh, the accompaniment, you know, the, the chord background for it. And check out the chart on that, and uh, don't be afraid to rewind and uh, learn that little piece. It's, like I said, it's good because it puts you, your hand in different fingerings than you would normally do in order to keep the notes ringing and so forth. This next example is simply the idea of playing a scale polyphonically. Again, I don't know if this is exactly a lick that you would want to use all the time in your soloing, but it, I'm doing this to suggest other ideas for you, you know, creative ideas. We're going to play a E minor scale. The only difference is we're going to add some notes beneath it. The idea is to keep hearing that. Now let's do it slow. Third finger on the B. First on the E. Now we're going to play the same fret as we're using with the third finger to hit the F sharp. But since we want to keep the, the B ring, we need a separate finger to do that. And I think the second finger is the, the best choice. So. Second finger on F sharp and fourth is the only one we got left for the G. So that works out real good. Now, bridge the first and second strings with your first finger, but only play the top string. And with your second finger, play the D. Your first finger is already on the E. Hit that. 
Bring your second finger around for the F sharp. And then play the G with your third finger. Now you're saying, wait a minute, Steve. Why aren't I using my third and fourth finger for these notes? That's because of the part that comes next. Remember, we want to hold the top note. And this G is the next top note of the next sequence. So the G with your third finger. And we want that to ring through all this. So the C below it with your first, D with your second, and E with your fourth. Review what we got so far. Now, another uh, bridge. We're bridging the second and third fingers, correction, second and third strings with our first finger. And it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's just like a B minor chord. B, C, D. Now, E is the next top note, and it'll be like an A minor uh, position, so we hit it. E with the third finger, A with the first, B with the second, C. Next, another bridge with your finger going between the third and fourth string. Start on the uh, D on the G string. And just walk up. We're, we're setting ourselves up to hit the next note with a third finger. Again, for reasons that have to do with the next lick. We're not going to use our fourth finger on this lick. Now, third finger on C. Now we're going to scrunch up our fingers here in order to get separate notes. We're holding the C, so let's play the F sharp with one, the G with two, and the A with four. These two. Now slide everything down, slide your third finger down to E. E, F sharp, two, G. So the pattern's starting to become a little obvious. One more with the bridge across the fifth and fourth string. Start with the A, play the D with your third. Use the bridge finger to play the E, and second finger to play the F sharp. Again, this is again to set your, your third finger up for the next lick, which is a G on top. You're holding the G. So use the fingers you got left to play the notes. Continue this. The exception is here, this next to last lick, we're gonna use second finger. Okay, here's another real simple lick that'll kind of combine the idea of one note ringing while the others play, or the other fingers play something else, and you know sliding between positions. Just playing. Uh, well, here, let me play it first. The idea is real simple. Just play a arpeggio of an A minor. But why you you hold the hold the E while you move the, between the A and the C, then slide it down. The same thing down, just so we got A minor, F, arpeggio, then a C arp. Now we're gonna play a G. This is a D minor. This is a A minor. G.
the lick I was just playing has got the combination of arpeggios, chromatic notes, and polyphonic suggestion all rolled into one. It's a real powerful lick and it's got, to, well, it'll push the time right along with it. And we're going to learn it as a lick, but once again, the point is to figure out a way to turn this into, you know, some way that will help your style, give you some ideas, some creative ideas to improve your soloing or to give you different avenues, different points of view. We're going to start with, well, I'll start with the first note as a novel concept. Okay, it's a high A. This is an A minor. Why is everything an A today? Well, because... If you write things in A minor, there's less sharps and flats, and it's easy to read. But this, is, this concept can go in any key, anywhere on the guitar. It's just it's no big deal to transpose it. So let's start with the first note, A. We're going to use the fourth finger there, because this kind of adds on to our idea of using strange fingerings in order to let notes ring, or in order to easily grab other notes. So we're going to get a high A, and our, our top notes, that's our top part, but we're going to fill it in with a bunch of other notes to uh, support it. So we got A, and then on the G string, C, B, A. So let's now move to E. What? What's this? That note's not in the scale. Right, but it's just a chromatic note, a passing note. So we're going to use it. Again, we go E. And then the C with the second. B with the fourth. Again, a chromatic note. And then an A. Again, we're starting on the second octave, going. Familiar fingering. You notice in this fingering, we're not depending on keeping the top note ringing. This is because this is designed more for distortion. And with distortion, if you have one note ringing over another, it's not as likely to sound good or as clear as if you kill every note as you move on. Okay, again, if Next is a G chord, starting on the D. That's just stretching it a little bit because it's some weird notes in there. But actually, there's only one note that's different. And that's the F sharp instead of an F. Again, you'll find it's on the weak part of the. So it's it works fine. And then one more time on an A minor, starting on C. finish it off any way we want or go back up. In this case, we'll, we'll go and just kind of end it. So we go. Okay, if any of these scalar ideas sound too normal for you. You might want to try this lick, which is kind of derived from Joe Diorio's concept. Mm -hmm. He did some uh, seminars down at the University of Miami a long time ago when I was a student there. And this kind of shows some of his influence. Mm -hmm. What this is is an intervallic. Sounds pretty fancy. Just means skipping around on the strings. Playing a little pattern in fifths. Start on the D, second finger, A, fourth finger, E, first, B, fourth. Come back down with a A, D, G with your third, and C with your fourth. Now move the whole lick up a major third from where we started, but start on the next string. So 
We start on the second finger on F sharp. C sharp with your fourth. G sharp with your second. D sharp. I guess to say, I don't know. C sharp. F sharp. B with your third. And E with your first. Then continue the pattern starting a third down from where that ends. So. And continue all, all up and down the guitar until someone in your household runs screaming and turns off your amp. title or the basic idea of this is power lines and things that will really give you a lot of power in your playing but along the way while I'm demonstrating uh, some of these things this particular amp setup I'm using is real conducive to harmonics so I've been grabbing a few here and there I'm going to show you some of the techniques I use for that one is tons O distortion that makes it easy and by using a pick real close to the skin of my fingers I can grab harmonics out of notes. You can see there's different harmonic points along the string. And I don't want to get into a whole theory discussion of harmonics and uh, fundamental in the harmonic series and everything, but one way to get harmonics is by choking up on the pick. And what you're actually trying to do is strike the pick or correction, strike the string with your pick while you're muting half of the string with your skin, the skin or your fingernail or whatever happens to be right there next to the pick. That's one way of doing it. Another way for getting specific notes is to do artificial harmonics. And it's a pretty easy concept. You just play a note and then find a naturally occurring harmonic a certain number of frets above it. That would be 12 frets above, or 7 frets above, or 5 frets above, and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. The easiest one is 12 frets above. Let's do that first. Here I'm playing an E on the B string. Go 12 frets above. I'm going to pick the note at the same time that I touch right over the fret wire, 12 frets above the note I'm fretting. So. gives a different sound to the string. Like I said, you can go seven frets above and five frets above and even shorter, but it gets harder and harder to, to make uh, music out of it. And the fingering changes. Like here, you have an E. Now you got a B. Now you got a B, an E again. Now you got to do it in a different key if you do seven frets above. So you want to use Whichever technique gives you the best results. These are just some ideas. Well, thanks for joining me today on this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, let me hear back from you. If you see me at one of the clinics I do, or at a gig or something, I'd like to get some feedback. Oh, feedback, no. Not that kind of feedback. And uh, I'd like to thank some of the companies that lent their support in other ways. American Music for lending us some of the stuff. PV, Ernie Ball, Music Band, Lexicon, DiMarzio and uh, MCA Records for letting me do the video, and uh, Roger at REH, and Don Mock for lending a tremendous amount of creative help with the video. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.